Okay, good evening all on stream and play chess. So we're looking at Morphe again this week. Let's have a look at uh, Paul Morphe against Adolf Anderson, who was one of his arch rivals in 1858. Uh, so this this game was played in Paris. Uh, so in the Romantic era, the King's Gambit was all the rage. So after e4, the most common reply seems to have been e5. Maybe at that time people hadn't ventured much with the Sicilian defence or the French defence. Um, okay, so e5 was the most common reply. Then we have the King's Gambit, which is rarely seen nowadays. But actually at the London Classic, uh, Hikaru Nakamura reeled it out against the top grandmaster Michael Adams and managed to win with the King's Gambit in one of the recent London classics. So sometimes it's seen in modern grandmaster games. So anyway, it was accepted because at the time you should you should really uh, accept all gambits. It was the done thing. Uh, to not accept them was, was equivalent of some sort of cowardice. So knight f3 and now black played g5. And we see uh, from, from examples last week and the, and the week before that uh, the problem with this whole thing, okay, it's holding on to the F4 pawn, but it's at some cost to black because potentially uh, if this chain can be wiped out, we've got isolated pawns. And in particular, this pawn is really sensitive on this F file. And also diagonally, it's usually a sensitive pawn. The king often uh, in trouble because of that. So will this game be uh, following that kind of template? Well, f7 is highlighted immediately with bishop c4. Uh, we see bishop g7, uh, which looks good for, you know, for strengthening black central control, white castles. The rooks you know, naturally deploy, deploy to try and blast its way through this f file, d6 which looks reasonably sensible. C3, as if White's interested in setting up this center, uh, putting some granite to that bishop on G7. Knight C6. And now we see a very, very direct move. Queen B3, just probing that F7 pawn, which is protected with Queen E7. And now D4. And now Black plays actually the move a6 okay and here we see actually that this f file is pretty sensitive uh, because white uses a move which kind of demolishes uh, the black position here showing how ferocious this type of position can be uh, can you guess what white played here if I give you 20 seconds starting from now. By the way, please switch the opening book tab if you're on play chess so we can play these guess the move things with more fun. So white to play here. What do you think you would play with white if you were playing with the King's Gambit? Which is ideal, by the way, for blitz games, I think, on the internet if you want to have fun. So what would you play here? Anyone? Okay, so there's a trade-off which can occur in the Cairns Gambit for material against quality and time, uh, which Kasparov has emphasized that in um, how uh, chess imitates life. Um, but also king safety is like a major factor, particularly in chess. So material, quality, time, king safety. Uh, but quality, I guess you can express it in terms of king safety. So to give up material here, white can play knight takes g5. And it gets time because after queen takes g5, well, it gets time for the f7, bishop takes f7. And already, actually, this knight is in trouble, if nothing else, if the king wants to try and protect it that's dangerous on the f file so the king goes away and it seems as though white can potentially just take the g8 uh, knight in this position um, but uh, he first takes on f4 queen goes back and now he just takes the knight on g8 so he's got his material back it wasn't even uh, it's the investment with with 
dividends. Bishop g4 is played, knight d2, king d7. Okay, which does attack now that bishop. So the bishop goes to d5. And there's a problem here with queen takes b7. That c6 knight will be loose. So knight d8 with takes b7. But actually, it's taken anyway. Bishop takes b7 here. Uh, because you know, if, if something like rook b8 white at minimum has got a check here in any case to get out of the pin, uh, so black actually played knight takes b7, and after queen takes b7 a5, now another crushing blow here. Can you spot what white played in this position? If I give you 20 seconds starting from now really demolishing black's position finishing the job here making this a kind of classic king's gambit slaughter game really anyone so another not a trade of material for quality and time and part of quality is like uh, king safety and linked into king safety so bishop takes d6 bishop takes d6 it deflects the queen away potentially from the f7 square for this rook to come to f7 to win this bishop again winning back material potentially so black actually realizes that and plays bishop takes d4 check which doesn't really help matters because after c takes queen takes d6 it turns out that rook f7 check is really strong in any case even without munching the bishop here because the king now is driven to the back row black actually resigned here if the king goes back then we just take here and then we're munching another rook and here it's just massive material advantage and the queen has also happened to be protecting d4 as well so a rook up White could do, do even better technically with the check first as well. No, no, the check rook king g7. No, taking the rook is fine. Taking the rook is fine. So, okay. Uh, let's. I hope you got something from that. It was like a classic template for the king's gambit. What can go wrong for black being uh, trying to cling on to, to that pawn, having the f file blasted. So, classic game there. Now, let's have a look at Paul Morphy playing a lord. Uh, and this apparently was in Birmingham, Birmingham, uh, I guess in 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 England. Uh, Paul Morphy did visit England. I hope. I d <laughs> um, do we do we have uh, any verification on that? Staunton, I have someone called Staunton. Um, I guess is very appropriate. I think Staunton avoided a match against Morphy. We have someone with the nickname Staunton, so maybe he'll be able to tell us. A little bit about Morphe potentially uh, or maybe okay <laughs> maybe it just happens to be called Staunton but I remember on the chess news groups a few years ago there was a lot of banter about that someone pretending to be uh, Staunton and kind of wife winding up Morphe fans actually um, okay <laughs> so let's go on to the next game um, so Paul Morphy against Lord uh, Littleton Littleton I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly Lord it does seem like Lord Littleton so 27th of August 1858 uh, so e4 and we see the classic sorry Paul Morphy playing white and of course e5 very popular f4 and of course it's taken knight f3 g5 and here we see a quick undermining of this pawn chain with the move h4 g4 the knight moves to e5 here okay d6 and there's some notes here by Lowenthal who was a master around that time and he believes he well he noted that this was a favorite defense with Kazakski, uh, but one that, according to Janish, renders the maintenance of the pawn an impossibility. Knight takes g4, bishop e7, which targets white's h4 pawn, of course. d4, bishop takes h4 check, 
and that this apparently was a novelty to take this pawn apparently um apparently i'm getting this wrong hang on a sec queen takes g5 hang on knight f2 sorry here no no novelty yet pardon me the knight retreats and here apparently is a slight novelty idea that apparently theory at the time was actually showing black to play queen g5 uh, so for example queen f3 and then bishop g3 so the idea black's holding on to dear life with that for that f4 pawn um so and play could continue from, from that but here black actually played bishop takes f2 check which renders black uh, theoretically a bit weak on these dark squares potentially not that one uh, so how can white exploit the dark squares well he takes with his king the king is inconvenienced but let's imagine black's weak on the dark squares without that dark square bishop slightly weaker uh, you know when you have this kind of strengthening or weakening on a certain color complex a group of squares uh, you can look for you know resources and you can sometimes if you've got an advantage on those color of squares you can take what normally would be liberties and if the opponents are at a disadvantage on these kind of squares you want you want to try and emphasize them in some way so how can white emphasize the dark squares how does he do that if that is a theme here indeed let's have a look knight f6 well he's attacking the e4 pawn uh, knight c3 queen e7 again attacking e4 now e4 is actually offered here white played bishop takes f4 um now lord littleton might not have been the strongest player in the world because actually he gets a bit greedy here with his king in the center still in the center and, and doing this active operation now to take on e4 which is just often it's going to be punished because when when you have um you know visible weaknesses you shouldn't really be going for active operations you can assume there's going to be some sort of horrible punishment sometimes and that punishment will take the form of forcing moves and here white can play some forcing moves he takes on e4 queen takes e4 and the forcing move which is a cold shower to black hair is of course bishop b5 check uh, very critical check because this lethal rookie one is on the cards potentially so the king uh, is inconvenienced we can't black can't interpose anything because of rookie one so the king goes to f8 which is unfortunate because that's a dark square and the bishop can check the king here king g8 and here is where it gets a little bit on the nifty side a nice little nifty attacking move uh, which kind of extinguishes queen f5 check actually so it's kind of attacking and defensive against queen f5 i wonder if you can guess it if i give you 20 seconds starting from now what does white play here <clears throat> Anyone? Okay. Nope, no one's seeing it. Um, there's a few suggestions on stream. Triple pawns. Hi there, friend of chess. Hi. Um, no one's suggesting it. Oh, is this a bit too subtle? This move or something? maybe you're looking for forcing moves okay it's it's i think it's quite a cute move here um it's a cute one i think rook h5 not only taking away queen f5 but now threatening just rook g5 so we've got this vicious attack so black tries to defend with bishop f5 okay and now 
we see the move queen d2 uh, which threatens uh, like check if the bishop goes that with we've, we've got things like queen d8 that would be this destructive so black decides to parry in advance at least remove the check uh, possibility by playing uh, bishop g6 but unless after rook e1 uh, this back row is incredibly weak uh, so I guess this wasn't the strongest game black played here <laughs> this opening was uh, a disaster black had to resign here we're faced with a horrible back row mate potentially so the innovation uh, which wasn't very successful was giving up voluntarily this bishop so if we follow um, one of the theoreticians at the time uh, black should have I, I tried to mention that but let's, let's try and play it through I've got some variation by uh, one of the players at the time low and full so he indicated actually um, that let's just check this out out of interest Queen f3 his line goes Bishop g3 so there's cutting edge opening theory for 1858 knight c3 uh, knight f6 Bishop d2 and then uh, there's two variations Bishop b5 uh, or is it knight c3 knight f6 bishop d2 knight f6 uh, no I think well it went like this anyway so perhaps this is better for black um, has black got anything going for him here well he that bishops kind of useful uh, in the game you see black was slaughtered completely on the dark squares if you remember so I guess giving up this bishop it was an instructive lesson not to give up that bishop so okay so let's let's go on to another game. So uh, now, this this is interesting because on my YouTube channel I featured a game recently. Um, the the disputed uh, Morphe Immortal was against Bird, a player called Henry Edward Bird, and here is another game against Bird, uh, played in London, eighteen fifty eight. So e4 bird played e5 king's gambit again knight f3 g5 h4 okay g4 knight e5 knight f6 bishop c4 targeting f7 d5 and here we see a kind of counter gambit by bird at least to try and give back a pawn to get a reasonable position so e takes d5 which blocks the bishop and a blockade bishop d6 so blockading the pawn and it looks as though black should have some sort of something to play for here so d4 because now black has knight h5 so at least knight h5 is putting off white from castling because then queen h4 and that looks terrible it also protects f4 it also protects friends come to g3 doesn't look too bad knight c3 Bishop f5, at least stopping knight e4. So Bird maybe wasn't a total, um, totally weak. He, he seems to have so far things uh, reasonably under control, and at least he's forcing uh, Morphy to work his uh, pieces a bit hard here, harder than maybe the previous game, uh, because we see the move knight e2, trying to get wrench that pawn back. And Black now did give up this dark square bishop. Um, so maybe positionally, um, they, they 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 were volunteering uh, bishops, uh, destroying um, the safety on a on a color complex here. If Black's giving up the bishop again, you'd expect Black to be weak on the dark squares at some point here or immediately. In fact, so D takes E5, uh, F4 is a major target. It has to, something has to be done potentially. Uh, so about that, so Black tries F3. But you know, look at all these dark squares. I mean, these dark squares are just a feast for this bishop, really, in theory. So let's see what happens here. So um, g takes f3, g takes f3, and immediately that bishop does seize a lot of the dark squares with bishop g5. 
and black is just so vulnerable here what can he do I mean does he move his queen to d7 uh, this doesn't look good um, he actually played <laughs> believe it or not f6 which doesn't look good either uh, but the idea is um, potentially uh, to do something interesting here after e takes to play queen d6 so knowing that the knight uh, if it moves it's there's queen g3 check so there's a little bit of ingenuity in black's play uh, but the knight doesn't have to move though Paul Morphy played uh, uh, queen d4 so he's offering the knight because you know f7 check will win this rook over here uh, potentially uh, but actually after f takes e2 maybe something even stronger now uh, is played uh, because if we go on this adventure with f7 check you know black at the end of the day will be playing queen g3 and the queen's going to be away from the king here what Paul Morphy did instead was bishop takes e2 so he's attacking this knight now as well as keeping this option for f7 check to win the rook okay there's queen g3 check which is played but king d2 and where are the checks uh, so this knight is still kind of hanging this f7 is still a problem so black played uh, castling but there's a new problem here with the queen on g3 and the king like this um, and Paul's made it look very easy here but uh, on move 18 rook ag1 seems as though black should resign and black did resign where is the queen going here another total disaster just 18 moves so in both these examples uh, of these two games it seems uh, the player with black was giving up the dark square bishop just to be destroyed on the dark squares later uh, so that's something to, to bear in mind maybe um, something instructive there so let's look at another game so Paul Morphy now this is a, an interesting material odds game so you'll see here that the rook is missing and the knight is missing so material odds is certainly if you're at material uh, disadvantage uh, a good tip is to go for the king uh, because like your two pieces down here basically uh, the equivalent of minus eight um, or minus 2.5 if you don't want to give the knight free so minus 7.5 okay so how does Paul Morphy uh, play without a rook and knight would he still play the king's gambit you think uh, so e4 e5 in fact yes he does play the king's gambit he plays f4 and it's accepted knight f3 you think you know these these were useful pieces particularly the knight you know it was useful in that game to get to f4 so without the knight is that going to be a problem um and funny enough uh, the opponent by the way is called a knight um his surname appears to be knight quite amusingly so g5 this was in new orleans new orleans 1856 this game so Paul at this time was still in the United States uh, so Bishop c4 Queen e7 uh, d4 offering the e4 pawn and black is not that greedy to take on e4 maybe black has noticed that this isn't so so good if say King f2 and then we've got rookie one on the card so black didn't take here uh, he played d5 we see bishop takes d5 uh, and now this gets a bit crazy black played c6 and it looks as though well white's already two pieces down uh, guess what white played in this position uh, if I give you uh, 20 seconds starting from now white play Anyone? Uh, 
Um, I think he's he's been a bit. Well, he has to be optimistic. He's two pieces down. I think there's no choice but to be optimistic. Uh, he plays actually. Bishop takes f7, so he's going three pieces down. So black can take with either the queen or the king. Um, and you know it doesn't seem that convincing if 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 king takes. Um, I don't really know what white will have here. I mean, this looks a bit dangerous, but you know, even if black say lost the rook, is it that big deal? This kind of example, but uh, that that's not what happened actually. Queen takes f7 was played, uh, which uh, allows knight e5, and the queen is evicted from this diagonal here. So we see queen f6. Queen h5 check. Um, is this a big problem? White is three pieces down here. Why would this be a big problem? And in fact, black also sidesteps, uh, you know, king d8, knight f7, if that is a big deal. I'm not sure it is. Uh, but black played actually king e7, uh, which might not be such a brilliant idea. So white has these resources to play with. The rook. The bishop, the knight, and the queen. These guys are kind of spectating at the moment. Uh, these guys are kind of spectating. So White has to use his resources, you know, quickly here, uh, ingeniously. Uh, you know, like those old games writers that had to write games for, uh, you know, the old computers like BBC Micro and Commodore 64. They had very limited uh, resources, yet were able to do some interesting games. So White has very limited resources here. Um, so what does he do? Well, h4 cries out. It activates the rook, uh, point one. Point two, it undermines the pawn chain. So it's really helping the bishop, actually, this h4 as well as the rook. Uh, so that's, that's good. It's something to try here. And black now played g takes h4 which does weaken f4 and now the rook switches its, its attention to the f4 by playing castling so if white can get that classic f file is this really gonna uh you know destroy black's king safety even though white is like three pieces down and you might think as well you know with the, without the light square bishop can this really be happening so black plays the defensive move bishop h6 which seems okay. Where is the attack? And you know, there's not even a g3 here. This pawn stopping g3. So actually, we see the move b3 now. The bishop uh, can actually try and deploy here on this diagonal. We get a kind of crossfire potentially with the queen. Black played knight d7, bishop a3 check, and now black plays the move c5 and now we see the rook again moving to d1 now and I think uh, to win this game needs a little bit of assistance from black because white is a lot of pieces down here and it seems uh, you know it's it's tricky to do anything like with this pawn uh, because you know this knight will be lost um, so in fact black took the knight on e5 here but now we see bishop takes c5 check and what has black done he's done something which now looks a bit dubious because all of a sudden if the king moves to the d file then of course d takes e is check and winning the queen so all of a sudden black is with very limited options here in fact because the queen is still eyeing at e8 the king unfortunately embarrassingly has to move forward here to e6 and on e6 embarrassingly a very humiliating continuation queen i wonder if you can guess it actually what would be a very humiliating move here for black if I give you 20 seconds starting from now
Anyone? <clears throat> so mind over matter, what can white play here? Not d5, check. If you played d5, the king can go to d7. Mm. No, the embarrassing move for black is queen e8 check. Stops the king from going to d7. So it cuts off d7 in particular, cuts off f7 for that king. And now, embarrassingly, humiliatingly, of course, yes, you can sit here, I hope, 10 seconds. What can white play here? It's mating one. I hope you can see it. Mating one with d5. It's checkmate. The king has no squares. The king, the, the escape routes have been cut off by the queen d7 in particular by the queen sitting on e8 how embarrassing white was two pieces down and for good measure throw, throw, threw in a third piece how utterly embarrassing that here at this stage it was like three pieces up uh, but we see the importance of king safety believe it or not it seems like um, a miracle occurred somehow that this bishop kind of was lured away and is not on this diagonal um, and it seems that this b3 is helping the queen um, whoa so b3 helped the queen and then a terrible blunder by black knight takes e5 if black had played anything else it's difficult to see how white could force any win uh you know maybe b6 i i i you know it is white really um you know winning this position um it, I, I wouldn't have thought so i mean maybe maybe this is possible unless unless uh, this is get, getting mated as well no this does seem to be getting mated as well i found another way for black to get mated <laughs> this crossfire is is pretty lethal okay so we get a similar sort of situation here which is embarrassing in fact in fact we could go for a rook d6 mate variation here oh ow <laughs> so okay maybe uh you know he had something with this b3 and bishop a3 for some reason black seems to be a bit vulnerable in this position uh okay so c5 maybe, maybe king king d8 and uh, that would be better king d8 surely surely not black can't lose this position uh as easily anyway i hope so let's go on to another game anyway so again in new orleans 1849 now against james uh, mcconnell so this is um another king's gamut james mcconnell playing black h4 g4 knight e5 and we see actually h5 here protecting g4 bishop c4 and a very resourceful looking rook h7 to protect f7 d4 d6 the knight goes back to d3 here so this is similar to spassky against fisher when spassky beat fisher in the king's gamut there was a knight e5 to d3 maneuver and fisher uh, was quite annoyed by that game lost in the king's gamut wrote the refutation paper for the king's gamut uh so not not quite this variation but i'm just a similar knight maneuver that's the similarity so black played f3 here g3 knight f6 
and the knight, the nifty knight, goes to f4 here. Knight f4. Bishop d7. Knight c3. Knight c6. Bishop e3. Knight e7. And Paul plays now king f2. Knowing there's no major check here. c6, rook e1. Bishop g7. Bit more maneuvering in this game. Bit more closed than usual. But uh, now breaking the center with e5. Black takes, white takes. Knight fd5. A lot of pressure on d5. Bishop takes, c takes. But now bishop c5. Instead of automatically uh, recapturing there. Bishop c6. b4. So like in the game we've just witnessed, this bishop is occupying this diagonal here. Interestingly, and this bishop is 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 not uh, helping that at the moment b6 right now white takes on e7 undermining d5 now takes on d5 with the king in the center this next move is very effective knight f6 check forking king and rook and asking for this rook to be opened up which it is bishop takes e takes check king f8 and now queen d6 check, king g8, rook e7, forcing move. Horrible that the queen uh, has to go back now to c8, which runs into rook c7, which seems to win material, but black's queen f5 threatens, maybe it's threatening something naughty here. White doesn't mind he takes on c6 queen takes c2 check and the king avoids being mated here if he played king that would be embarrassing if he played this because queen g2 so the king steps to e3 and the king is pretty safe here it would appear if rookie eight's not on the cards so black is material down we see rook d8 and simply uh, in this position, rook d1 to stop all the stuff, uh, which could be annoying. Uh, black's back row is weak here. So rook takes, we could just slip in queen e8, mate. So black actually uh, resigned here. It's, um, yeah, quite savage a lot of these King's Gambit games. So, uh, you know, very effective for that time. So let's go now to New York. So in 1859 uh, against Moncure Daniel Conway in New York. And of course another King's Gamut with G5, Bishop C4, G4. Now the Knight doesn't bother moving here against Moncure da Daniel Conway. Paul actually decided just to try out here D4 just offering the knight on a plate. So we see g takes, queen takes. Uh, so black has got these like isolated pawns and this f file. It looks like a classic recipe for disaster again. Bishop h6, white castles, knight e7, white takes on f4. And <laughs> after bishop takes f4 uh, the f file disaster can now occur uh, quite effectively with this next move that Paul Morphy plays which makes this game uh, look quite simple what does white play in this position if I give you 20 seconds starting from now <clears throat> Anyone? Right, it, it would seem, that, you know, maybe uh, his opponent was expecting Queen takes F4. But things were accelerated along with just bishop takes f7, drawing the king out. 
um, on the F file on that lethal King's Gamut F file King takes and now Queen takes F4 check King G7 and now it's just going into a forced mate check King G8 Queen F7 mate ouch 12 move disaster so King's Gambit is it is it worth a try in blitz games I would say yes I've had good results with King's Gambit in blitz now here's a blindfold game played against John William Schultz Shulton in 1857 uh, New York was it a blindfold simultaneous I expect possibly so playing white against John William Shulton 1857 blindfold no King's Gambit you might be relieved ah, by the way Knight F3 you might be relieved with that bit of variety here so Bishop C4 Bishop C5 Gyoko piano uh, now after castles black played this really aggressive move F5 which of course suffers from this diagonal being more vulnerable than usual and white isn't keen to just take that pawn uh, which might allow d5 no he keeps a grip on the center in fact Paul Morphy plays d4 sacking a pawn finding a way to sacrifice pawn for e5 that keeps the knight out of f6 and this diagonal is still a pain black tries d6 white takes on d6 queen takes check knight g7 this pawn is a bit of a pain here it's blocking in the bishop this diagonal seems painful in fact knight g5 now threatens now knight f7 just to fork queen and rook black played knight e5 to defend that bishop f4 pinning knight 7 to g6 white takes on e5 knight takes e5 and the final move of the game which just uh, is is uh, all over then um, is, is played here what would you play here final move of the game if I give you 20 seconds starting from now I mean, I, I expect that f4 is almost winning as well. well. It allows this um, d3 check, but I guess f4 is also winning. But knight f7 is just clear a cut. Don't need to use the f pawn, just forking everything. So here, black resigned. Uh, so these these are quite crushing uh, wins. Uh, let's go on to Alexander Buford Meek now in New York 1857 so meek actually after e4 chose something probably not not you know rarely seen he played actually the French defense Wow we've got something different from the standard patterns now a French defense how does Morphe react to this how is the French defense played in 1857 well after d4 apparently it's not with d5 Alexander meek tried c5 which is a kind of check Benoni uh, position after d5 e5 we have a kind of check Benoni and you know maybe a lot of modern players will be tempted to play c4 here but Paul Morphy has this influence of course for opening up files and actually one of the strongest players in my chess club also refused to play c4 when playing against Chet Bononi a couple of years back uh, John Piggott instead he he did the same kind of Morphe plan here white can try and crack this nut very directly borrowing some ideas from the King's Gambit by playing the move f4 here but you might think well hold on the center bit closed here can can white really play like this let's see what happened d6 Knight f3 and something which echoes the Morphe Opera game now Bishop g4 uh, 
The rule uh, knights before bishops uh, given by Tarash came later. The kind of um, uh, the rules given by Tarash to guide you know beginner players, but at the time you know the bishops being moved before the knights. So is that a big deal? Well, it can be a big deal here if if white um, you know it can use the light squares. If this bishop's going to be given up, you can expect a light square disaster often. So f takes e5, and the bishop is given up. So it's, it looks a bit like a, a relative of the opera game here. Queen takes f3, d takes e5, check, knight d7. And now this knight c3, which looks really good actually, uh, because, well, it's protecting the bishop. And it's preparing potentially to castle queen's side if this bishop can get out of the way. Knight g f6, bishop g5. And here we've got trouble here at mill because if g6, you know, we've got this pin on, on this uh, knight here, we can just take care. Ouch. You know, if that happened, end of game. So if g6 is unavailable, that doesn't leave too many alternatives. But I think black should try bishop d6. If we play bishop d6, this might not be so terrible. But unfortunately for black, uh, he actually <laughs> played bishop e7, which allows, uh, guess what? If I give you 20 seconds starting from now, what does white play here? White's play. What would you play here? <clears throat> Anyone? Okay. White can play D six. Ouch. Give out a pawn to rip open this default. All of a sudden, the center is not closed here. We've just opened up a major file in the center. Black should really, perhaps, it looks grim, but bishop f8 probably is a lesser evil move. But then we've got things like knight d5. And this is horrible. And if, you know, if white, if, you know, this this is not helping c3 here, you know, if, if it takes, we've got knight c7 check, forking um, things. So, Bishop f8, knight d5 looks as though it's going to be slaughter time for black in any case. But in the game, black just played bishop takes d6. And after castles, uh, queenside, you know, just realized, hold on a sec, this this is a bit of a problem. Um, what can he do here uh, in this position, in fact? He resigned. Now let's say black plays queen c7. I think uh, bishop takes f6. Queen takes f6. It's forking these two guys. That would be a disaster, for example. Uh, but they might even be stronger. Maybe in the lines of the opera, you know, rook takes d the opera game. Rook d6. There's also maybe tempting. Um, because we've always got bishop takes f6. Rook d7, we're smashing through like this. So that d file, it's it's all over really. It's all over. It's nasty. Uh, so black actually decided to resign here. So another punishment akin to the opera game, uh, the classic that most people know when we talk about Paul Morphy. So against um, La Roche, let's have a look at a game against La Roche now in 1859. Um, and again, we get a bit of variance from King's Gambit. So knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. We get um, b4, Evans, captain c, Evans, um, c captain, Evans. So c3, bishop a5, d4. Black tries knight f6. D takes e5, knight g4. 
already this looks a bit weird because this bishop is not helping on these dark squares here it's away from base bishop g5 is more effective than it should be f6 white takes on f6 knight takes and this pin looks horrendous after e5 so this already looks diabolical uh it's it's just early evans uh gambit uh theory uh black has just being crushed here already he tries h6 white just plays e takes f h takes g5 and now just f takes g7 it's hitting the rook and it's gonna queen it's supported by the bishop after queen e7 check that doesn't help just queen e2 pinning the queen and black resigned here horrendous He's just, he just knows he's going to lose a rook. He just gives it up here. Okay, so one final game uh, this week. Uh, one final disaster to show you. Um, is in 1866, back in New Orleans, uh, before Paul visited Europe later. So, again, in New Orleans, the King's Gambit. This is against Charles Morian, New Orleans, 1866. So, G5, Bishop, C4, G4. And Paul played this d4 here, he didn't bother moving the knight. g takes, queen takes f3, d6. And okay, how is black going to try and save being slaughtered on the f file? Well, he tries bishop e6. And now, maybe a little bit surprisingly, Paul voluntarily clo apparently closes the center with the move d5. Okay, a little bit of respite for black, maybe. Bishop takes f4, but the center is about to be uh, put under great pressure now with e5. And there's a horrible threat here of e6, and black doesn't really want to play into this. This would look horrendous as well, all this stuff. So he actually plays queen g4, wanting an exchange of queens. That's rejected, of course, with queen e3. After bishop e7, white takes on d6. C takes rook e1. So the knight cannot move now without being mated on e7. Black tried h5. Bishop takes d6. The queen has to go back. Bishop takes e7. Knight takes e7. And the final move of the game, can you guess it? What does Paul Morphy play here? If I give you 20 seconds starting from now. Anyone? Okay, with the king in the center, the knight on e7, only the queen's protecting the knight. The next move, the forcing move, uh, which wins more material, is bishop b5. And that's end of game. Uh, so if queen takes, we're just, we're just mate. And what can black do? Really, realistically, knight c6 is just losing more material. We can even still take on c6 there anyway. So it's hopeless. Uh, so black resigned I hope um, there was something in this week which was good for king safety at, at minimum how you know sacrificing material gets things done gets extra time pressure quality of pieces rapid development and we also saw some examples of opponents perhaps too willingly giving up bishops when later there was a disaster on the on the color of the bishop it's logic it's a game of logic in, in many respects chess you know th these attacking resources are just given to paul morphy on many occasions in these examples um but the king's gambit you know by its nature is setting black up potentially for a disaster on the f file and we saw many examples of that this week hope you enjoyed it okay comments or questions on youtube when i upload it there thanks very much